Next question is from Jordan Harris. You speak on the importance of periodization and proper phasing of workouts found in your MAPS programs. How about the phasing or periodization of endurance-based workouts such as running, swimming, biking, mm-hmm. etc., and the proper programming of resistance training if it's alongside endurance training for the endurance-based athlete? Should there be any program changes if I were to run MAPS anabolic or performance alongside my endurance sport. Another good well, question. yeah, so that's going to be your priority, right? The endurance is obviously at the top of your pile. So now you're going to kind of adjust things to kind of uh, fit into that as being the the skill and the attribute that you value the most. And mm. so, you know, in terms of the actual strength training, that's going to reduce a bit, yeah. in, in my opinion. Well, we, yeah, we, totally. created, we created the MAPS programs with the uh, overall, like, fitness goals, uh, aesthetic goals, uh, functional goals in mind. When you start getting into an endurance athlete, that's a very goal-specific type of program. And just like Justin said, you're going to prioritize that. If you're an endurance athlete, I'm focused on your endurance training first, and then I want your 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 weight training program to complement that, mm-hmm. which is not what we wrote. Like We wrote programs that were really geared towards somebody who's trying to change body composition, improve mobility, build strength, very overall health general purpose for the for the masses. Then when you have someone like this, who, and I, I got a DM, it might even be the same person who asked this very, very similar question. It's like, listen, if you're an endurance sport, that's priority one. Then I'm going to use MAPS anabolic or performance to complement that. So you're you're gonna you're gonna set your your endurance goals based on that, which is completely different. Okay, so for those that are listening right now that are wondering about cardio, for somebody who's wanting to do cardio for the the, the sole benefits of losing body fat, right? They're mm-hmm. different, so yeah. you have to understand that. Yeah, yeah. So I've trained a lot of uh, endurance based uh, clients. So I've had clients that are triathletes or competitive swimmers or marathon runners. They love their sport. I never would, you know, try to talk someone out of doing something that they love mm-hmm. um, unless it was damaging them. But these people were very healthy about it. Um, you know, very good people. Again, I've trained a lot of them, hundreds uh, at least. And um, the way you train them with resistance training is to support what they're doing. The more endurance training you're doing, the less resistance training your body's going to be able to tolerate. So most of these people, I would train them, typically, no joke, around once a week with resistance training. No yeah. joke. And I'm talking yeah. about people who are really endurance uh, training focused. So like, I'll give you an example. I had one, one client that was a triathlete, loved competing um, you know, in, in, in those types of events. So they would either run, swim, or bike most days. So once a week, they would come into the gym and I would do probably 20 minutes of mobility work. And another 30 minutes of traditional compound lift uh, resistance training, I would keep the intensity moderate. If I push them too hard with intensity, I would take away from their their endurance training, which was their focus. The goal really was to minimize injury Mm -hmm. and give them some strength to support. Because here's the thing with strength. This is the wonderful thing about strength. It is the foundation of all other physical pursuits. So if you make an endurance athlete a little bit stronger, they get more endurance. Well, and so that's what kind of my, what my yeah. training would. And to that point too, like I would take that time to really assess like uh, where the focus should be, like in the posterior chain, for instance. Uh, you know, with, with runners, yes. you know, and, and and with endurance athletes was a very uh, big priority of mine to help to strengthen. So that way, you know, it provides that that way for them to like decelerate to to be able to have the strength to uh, control their body yep. better and support their joints so everything is about supporting their joints in, in their movement pursuits uh and and also alongside with that like mobility practices to to make sure you're greasing the groove that's what i would that's the one thing i would do more than once a week right strength training I'm, i might be only strength training one maybe tops two you do times mobility a week. every day mobility i'm doing on a very regular basis i mean that's going to complement and support what they're doing with their endurance sport so that like and so if if you have, if you own performance, I'm assuming this person does because they brought it up. I would be, I would be living in those maps performance uh, or mobility days as your primary focus, and then like it, the one of the strength training days, full body strength training days, and then the rest is really geared around your endurance training because that's your priority. Yeah, do yeah. one a week because yeah. in there you have three resistance training workouts a week. Do one. And, and make sure the intensity is moderate mm-hmm. and then do lots of uh, mobility. But, you know, at, Justin brought up a good point um, about individualizing it for the sport. Like runners, 
you know, I've trained a few competitive runners. And one thing you don't want to do with a runner is make their upper body really muscular because it's just more weight um, that will take away from their performance. So we didn't train on getting their upper body super muscular, but I did train their upper body to give them good posture. Mm-hmm. So I'd work a lot on their on making sure they don't get forward shoulder. I would work a lot on their core. It helped them a lot with their running mechanics because they're, here's what happens with, with competitive runners. As their posture starts to break down, so does their it start, they start to become less efficient with their running and it takes away from their performance. And then with their legs, I was making sure their legs stayed strong through full ranges of motion. One of the things about running is you work in such a short range of motion. So we would work on being able to do full squats and split stance type lunges. Yeah, I like a lot of like unilateral yeah. work for and somebody who's a runner. A lot of them. And yeah. then I would do things like tibialis raises to to help prevent things like shin splints and stuff like that. Now, as far as phasing or periodizing your endurance-based workouts – so you may be focused on one type of endurance sport, but studies have shown that if you do a little bit of other types of endurance sports, it actually might – it helps prevent injury. So if you're a runner, running is great. You might benefit from doing a little bit of cycling and a little bit of swimming on top of it. Uh, studies show that that helps reduce overuse. So in other words, you know, let's say you run five days a week. Um, maybe that one of those days you do a short run and then do a little bit of swimming uh, or cycling, something to kind of offset a little bit, then do your strength training and you're totally set. But what you don't want to do is this. If you're endurance focused, don't you can't be like you can't have gr- push endurance and strength at the same time. You'll get neither. Right. Yeah. So it's one or the other. So if you're endurance focused, the strength training is there to support it. It's not there to be the dominant thing because otherwise you're just going to overdo it. 